Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing, testing. <clears throat> hello, hello, hello. Testing, 
Testing one, two, testing, hello. Hello, testing, hello. Uh, eh, no, then they, they come in to click in one and I didn't press anything. Eh. Oh, okay.
Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Jason. We're going to start the meeting in just a couple of minutes. I'm just waiting to see if anybody else shows up. Um, I think everybody can hear me. I'll write a note in the chat just to make sure. And you can let me know if you have any problems. And uh, like I said, we'll just start in a minute. I'm just going to give it another minute or so, and then we can start. feel like I need some hold music or something. Okay, let's go ahead and start. Um, I uh, Looks like we have another couple people signing in. That's great. Um, I'm going to ask you to mute your microphones during the presentation. And if you have questions, if you write them into the chat and send them to me, um, I'll have a time at the end to answer some of those questions. It'll just be less confusing if we do it uh, that way versus everybody talking over everybody. So. <clears throat> Thank you ahead of time. All right, I'm just going to wait for uh, the rest of the people to join the conference. Looks like we've got almost everybody. <clears throat> okay, hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm going to go ahead and um, get started. And when people add in, then uh, I'll just get to follow in as we go. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is our webinar about my body for clothing and fashion. Um, today, I'm going to show you a few things about 
our software MyBody. And uh, I'm going to uh, show you at the beginning a video of how we do a scan. And then we're going to go into some features about clothing specifically. Um, tomorrow, just so you know, there's another webinar just like this one, but more focused on fitness, health, wellness. And I'm going to go ahead and give you the link to that right now in the chat. Um, so if you would like to learn more about how my body can be used for fitness and health, uh, you can join us tomorrow at the same time at this link and copy that down. And uh, we'll go into those in a little more detail. Today we're going to focus a little bit more on my body from the point of view of a cl custom clothier um, and how to take measurements for that purpose. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my entire desktop here. And I think the best way to get started is just to dive right in with a um, description of how we do a scan, how the scanner works. Yesterday I recorded a video with a coworker of mine to show that off to you. So I'm going to go ahead and play that on my screen, but WebEx doesn't do a great job of um, uh, showing this to everybody with the audio. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a YouTube link at the same time, which is here. And if you would, I'm going to go ahead and play it on my computer, um, but it won't have any loud audio. So please play it on YouTube on your side and uh, you get to watch me perform a scan. So I'll give you just a minute to click the link and get it ready. and then. Uh, and then I'll start my side and we'll, we'll watch it together. All right. Uh, for anybody, let's see, I'm going to just make one note in the chat. And then we'll continue. So, Hopefully you've seen the link, you've loaded it up, and I'm going to go ahead and start playing the video on my side now, and then we'll continue. So here we go.
I'm going to pause this video now. Uh, hopefully you all were able to see that. Um, that's the basic process for taking a scan. Like I said, there are two pieces of equipment, a sensor and a turntable, and the rest is handled by the software. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a spec sheet, and then let's talk a little bit about some of the details of our hardware. Um, the footprint is about six feet by five feet. Uh, the sensor needs to be approximately four feet away from the front of the turntable, like I said. Um, the turntable can have 110 or 220 power, so it's good uh, worldwide. And like you saw, all I have to do is set the two things uh, in the right position and then start the scan after calibrating. So it's a very simple setup. It takes very little time to get started. Um, the scan duration takes about 30 to 40 seconds, and we get over 600 frames of data that we average out to create a mesh and then we measure that mesh, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, the Connect sensor, you can see a picture of it right here. This is the latest sensor from Microsoft. It's the second version of the software, I mean of the hardware, sorry. Um, we're actually a partner with Microsoft. We're part of their, uh, we've been part of their early adopter program for these sensors. And this is actually the same kind of sensor that's used with the Microsoft Xbox for gesture control and for gaming. Um, it uses infrared light, to capture depth information, which is how we can use it to create a scan. Um, it's got an incredibly good precision, uh, meaning that if I scan uh, the same person several times, my uh, deviation from the mean would be uh, less, around a tenth of an inch. Uh, so it's very precise. And that allows us to get really good accuracy in our measurements um, and some high quality meshes. The turntable has a recommended max load of 300 uh, pounds, or 135 kilograms. Uh, it takes about 30 to 40 seconds, and it weighs approximately 20 pounds. So it's pretty portable. All you have to do is power it. Um, and then the Connect sensor needs a power source also and uh, uh, gets plugged into the computer. And there are some computer requirements down here. So. I hope that explains a little bit. If you have any other questions about the hardware, type them into the chat in the corner, and uh, I'll answer them at the end of our talk today. All right. So what I'd like to do next is show you the scans that we took of Daniela and show you a little bit about how this software works. So I'm going to just move this stuff out of the way. All right. So here's our My Body software on the screen. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click Open. And I'm going to load up some scans from Daniela. Now, I have multiple scans loaded here. And I want to do that for a particular reason, uh, to show you some of the features in the software and also to show you um, how we uh, can check precision. Also, we can take an average of all of, the, all of the measurements and display those. So doing three scans is recommended uh, to just uh, make sure that you get a quality scan and uh, we can average all the results together. So let's go ahead and click load here. There we go. So here is Daniela's scan. All right. You can see here on the right side, we've got a viewport that shows the 3D model with some measurements. And on the left side, we have the um, the tabs that we call them for the different features of the software. I'm going to start with the right side here. Um, you can see that it's a touch capable system. So I'm using a computer with a touch screen and I can select each of these measurements and see their measurement listed above them. Um, if I want to, I can hide the tape and I can get an idea of the shape of her body. Um, and I can also look through the body if I want to. So if I need to see how a measurement is being captured, I can actually look through the body from any angle and uh, look through this see-through view. Um, for determining shape, we also have profile and silhouette views. So if I click profile, I can see here from the side uh, information about her posture and the outline of her body. If I click silhouette, I get the same information from the front. So it's a couple of helpful tools. Now, the way that we capture these measurements is not by chance. What we're doing here is similar to the way that a tailor is identifying points of the body to measure the body. If 
I click landmarks here and turn off tape, what you can see here are the points of the body that we've found on Daniela's body that we're using to create those measurements. You can see here we've got our high point shoulder, our shoulder tip, our bust points, under bust, etc. Now, if I show my tape measure again, you can see that, for example, the chest measurement is defined by um, finding the fullest part of the bust. It's crossing the apex points. And just like you can see here, these two orange dots are representing her apex points, and the chest measurement is crossing through both of those. So we use landmarks, is what we call them, to identify parts of the body, uh, and we can actually segment the body as well, so we know where the limbs are and the head and the torso. And then we use that information to derive the measurements that you see here. All right. Now, you're not, you're not limited to the 33 standard measurements that we have whenever we load up a scan. You can actually take your own measurements as well. So if I click, for example, the girth tool here, I can create a custom measurement. And as I move it, it adjusts. I can move it onto limbs. And I can click finish to finish that measurement, which will get added to our body measurements list for the software here. And you can see that I've got my new measurement here. I can type in the name. Let's call it Jason's Waist. And there it is added to my list. I can do the same thing with a length measurement. So if I check from the starting point, let's say high point shoulder down to an apex point, I can create a length measurement wherever I want it to go and move these points. So it's a really great way to get all the measurements that you need um, pretty simply. And these measurements get saved with the scan. So the next time I load up her scan, I'm gonna see these measurements as well. All right. Um, there's one other tool I'd like to show you, which is a cross-section tool. This is good for girths to determine uh, a little bit of the proportions. So, for example, you can see here on the left of the viewport, I've got my front view and my back view, and I can see how those measurements were captured uh, with my cross-section tool. All right, let's move on to the tabs on the left here. The first tab is our profile view. It shows our vital information about our subject. So we have name, age, gender, height, weight, a um, little bit of information about the scanning method. Our next tab is our body measurements tab, like you were looking at earlier. I can see all of the measurements about the body. Um, and if I want to change units, actually, in the tools menu, I can switch between imperial and metric units. And like I said, there are about 33 measurements that are taken by default, and you can always add your own. All right. The third. Um, thing here is a charts and graphs view. And what this does is it takes an average of all of the scans that you did for this person and displays that for you along with a plot showing the um, different measurements. So I actually loaded up several of Daniela's scans. There are three of them here. I can switch between them using this pull down menu in the viewport. So if I want to see this scan versus the one that I had just done, or if I want to see two at the same time, for example, to compare, I can load one up on the left viewport and one up on the right using this split screen view down at the bottom. All right? And if I select one, I get them both and I can rotate as well. And you can see on the chart here that for the three scans that I took, um, the measurements are displayed here and kind of gives you an idea of the precision. Our standard deviation is 0 0.05, which is very, very good for this measurement. And that's going to change depending on the measurement, but they're all pretty good in the ballpark. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get off the split screen view here. And I'm going to show you a little bit about clothing measurements specifically. I'm going to click on the clothing tab here. And what this does is rather than um, just displaying body measurements, we can actually display garment measurements at the same time. Um, and what garment measurements are, are body measurements that have eases added to them in order for them to uh, fit as a piece of clothing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up a garment that I created earlier today. And this one actually doesn't have any eases in it, but I'll explain how it works in just a second. So we'll let that load.
And this is a jacket file that I created. We've got templates for different uh, garment types and we're always making new ones. All right, so now you can see we've got a different set of measurements here. We've got garment measurements instead of body measurements. Um, if I click on this tab for garment measurements, you can see the name of the measurements. I have my body measurement in the first column, and then I have an ease and an adjustment, which I'll discuss in just a second. You can see how these, me these uh, measurements are not necessarily following along the body. They may hang off the body. They'll hit the body at certain points and then fall off. So if you can think of a jacket front, um, these measurements here are our front length, and our back length. And these are also interactive measurements, which means that if I change a value of one of these measurements by adding an ease, it's going to affect the other rest, the rest of the measurements. So if I made her chest measurement larger, it's going to push out the front and back lengths, and those are going to move up, which allows you to get a good idea of how to create the garment measurements that you're going to need for that particular person. Um, these are getting these get saved as templates so that the next person they get will have these values applied to them using their body measurements as a starting point. So it's a good way to create custom clothing measurements for a person. Additionally, we may need to make some alterations here. So if we want these lengths to be a little bit longer, say, I can select a measurement and I can choose the adjust here and change that amount, which is going to interactively show you how that measurement is changed. This is great for sleeve lengths, uh, for preferences like sleeve lengths, inseams, also for asymmetries. So if we need to uh, make something a little bit longer or shorter because somebody's got a drop right shoulder, for example, uh, we can do that here, add them to the um, garment measurement, and the total shows up in the last column here, which we can then share with our pattern maker, et cetera. Um, there's a couple of other tools in the clothing tab that I'd like to show you, um, specifically, uh, for posture, we can see here that we've got a zoomed in view of her back and her neck, which allows me to see that she's got a very erect posture and we're going to affect her measurement slightly differently as a result. Um, looking at her shoulders, we can see that she's actually pretty even on both sides. She's, her right shoulder is a little bit higher than her left, looking at it through the grid. So we might make a very slight adjustment to the right sleeve length or the uh, the half shoulder, but probably for her, I wouldn't mess with it. All right. Once we're done with these alterations and we've got all of the measurements, um, the final step is to share it. So we've got many export options here. Um, we can export CSV files, which are Excel compatible files, PDF files, um, Adobe makes a reader for PDF, which is a great way to share images and text together or we can export images um, or just the garment measurements, which can actually go into a CAD system uh, like TukaCAD and uh, make alterations to the pattern alt automatically. Um, you can see here that we have an option to export either the particular scans measurements or an average of all of the scans. And like I said before, it's a good idea to take a few scans of somebody and um, export the average, uh, which will give you a nice clear idea of their body's measurements. Um, I exported one this morning, so let me show you how that looks. This is how the export comes out. It takes about uh, a minute to export all of the pictures and everything, so I thought I'd save the time. Uh, you can see here that the same information that you saw on the home screen is in this PDF file. I've got my customer information with her vitals here. If I scroll down, I've got my body measurements, including some body fat and and waist step ratios, which we'll talk more about tomorrow. Um, all the measurements are listed here. These are the body measurements, right? And I've got my back posture and my shoulder slopes right here in the file. So if I want to share this with my pattern maker and give them a better idea of that person, this is a great way to do it. Uh, I have the full body images here. So just in case something wasn't communicated with just the measurements, I can see them in the pictures. And for each of the measurements that I have, I've taken thumbnails along with the measurement value to make it really easy to see where the measurement was taken and how to uh, work with those measurements. So I've got all my measurements here. 
Um, and then I've got my fitness related things. If you have a fitness license, these get exported as well. And uh, I'll talk about these more tomorrow. But basically they're used to determine body fat percentage, um, as well as uh, being able to set goals for uh, trainers who want to put their clients on nutrition programs uh, or weight loss programs. Um, we have also information about health risks as well. So for somebody who is obese or um, has um, some health issues, uh, we can work on that with this tool as well. And uh, this will tell you your risks for various diseases. All right. That is the basic overview. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a little bit of time for questions. So if you do have a question, um, you can type it into the chat and I can uh, respond to you. Or if you'd like to see something else, uh, just let me know and I can show you that as well. So uh, Frank asked one question, which was uh, how, I believe how the um, sensor is connected um, to the computer. The sensor actually requires USB 3.0 and it works with Windows 8. Um, there, it needs a dedicated USB controller, and um, that's basically it. It's a Microsoft sensor, so it works in Windows, and it's just a USB 3.0 connection. Um, the turntable cable, currently it's not connected to the computer. We are working on a new version of the turntable which will connect via USB to the computer and we'll drive it directly. Uh, but right now they're asynchronous, meaning you have to start the turntable and the scan separately. So keep an eye on us uh, for the next, um, I think it's gonna take another month or so before those new turntables will be released. And uh, we'll be able to share those with you. Um, someone asked, is it possible to export OBJ? Yes, it is. If you click on export here and scroll down, we've got two formats to export the 3D object themselves. One is an OBJ, the other is STL. Um, the scan will come out as a mesh and you can do with it uh, whatever you need to. All right. Um, question on licensing. Um, as far as uh, getting a license or wanting to know prices, if you'll email us at info at staiku.com, we can help you out with that. I'm gonna write that down here. Oops. Email us there at info at staiku.com and, uh, and we can uh, talk about uh, what type of license you need and all that good information. Uh, let's see. Someone asked about the custom measurement specifically, uh, when you're doing the, the manual measurements, um, whether that was a vertical measurement or if it followed the contour. Our length tool, uh, our custom length tool actually works along the contour. So if I draw, for example, from here to here, say, you can see that it's actually tracing the contour. It's a convex hull, so if I, she doesn't have a lot of shape in that area, but, it actually follows over the convex parts of the body and um, and jumps over the concave parts, similar to a tape measure. So you can see it as though it's a, it's a piece of tape that you're, oh, you can see it right here, for example, where it's jumping over the concave parts of the body and, um, and following the convex parts. Um, I've got a couple of people asking about footwear. We are releasing um, in our next release, a beta of uh, feet scanning method and feet measurements. Um, I don't have a sample file here right now, so I can't show it to you, but um, we're gonna be releasing that next week. And I will put, if you uh, privately send me a chat with your email address, I can add you to our mailing list for the next release. And that will have some pictures and information about um, footwear specifically. Uh, it is a beta. It's something we're just testing out with uh, customers right now. So it's not a, an official release of footwear, but it's something we're heading towards. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked about uh, using multiple connects um, rather than just one. 
to do it without the turntable. We've actually found that uh, we get better precision uh, with a single connect over multiple frames rather than having a multiple connect setup. Uh, not to mention it's much more cost effective and easy to set up. Um, we started actually as a company with a multi-sensor um, uh, setup. We had eight sensors on stands and we were capturing that way, uh, but it was overkill. We didn't have to do that. Uh, we found that with just one sensor, we were getting really good results. And uh, so, yeah, we ended up moving with a more portable solution, more cost-effective solution. Uh, we have also played around with scans that don't use a turntable. Uh, that's something that uh, we would love to be able to do. It's uh, not something that we've currently released. Uh, let me see here. So uh, I wanted to point out that the um, what we call our extensions um, always include the information in the home tab, which means that no matter what uh, version of the software you have, you're going to have your profile, your body measurements, and your comparable charts and graphs. So when you do an export, you are going to get the body measurements that can be used for um, online apparel shopping, as well as uh, any information that is specific to the tabs. So it uh, can be used for both. Someone asked about multiple scans. Um, someone asked, are the three scans that, we, that I did done in a row, or is there a pause, get off and back onto the turntable? Um, there's a little pause to just restart the scan, um, but the person doesn't need to leave the turntable. They can stand there. You know, we go through the, the five second process of clicking through the, the important information and then do the scan again. So there is a slight pause, but it's not minutes. It's very, just a few seconds. Um, Someone asked about would the foot scans require a turntable? The answer is no. Um, currently, we are doing hand scans for feet where someone will lay on a bed or sit on a table and will uh, move the sensor around their feet to scan it. Um, we are testing with turntable views as well where someone can stand on a turntable and rotate. Uh, but currently, it's, it's a hand, hand process. Um, someone is asking, when they buy the software, what happens if you release a new version? Um, all of our licenses are, um, well, I should say, you can purchase, you know, one year, two year, three year licenses. Within the term of your license, all of the updates are included in free, as well as support. So um, I'll do a WebEx training session with you to get you started. And then if you have any questions, you can contact me directly um, to get information about the scanner, or how to use it, or get a refresh, or train somebody else, et cetera. So, um, uh, yeah, let's see what else we have here. Um, All right, someone is asking, um, can we actually visualize a shirt on the avatar um, for a customer? Um, this software doesn't do that. What it does is just shows measurements on the body, draping off of the body like I have here. Um, there are other tools that will do visualizations and you can export the, um, the scan to be able to do that. So, for example, um, our sister company, Tuca Tech, has a software called Tuca 3D, and you can export the values from this software into their visualization software and uh, drape a shirt or a pant or whatever you need to do. So uh, if you'd like to look more into that, you can go to their website, um, which is here, and look for uh, Tuca 3D, and you should see that software there. Um, someone's asking um, how long are the updates included or how many years for a base license? We typically sell a one-year license. 
um, but uh, we do have uh, good pricing if you want to extend that license. So uh, even at purchase, so if you want to buy a three-year license, that's perfectly fine. Just email us at info at uh, info at sifu.com, and uh, we can uh, set you up with a proposal for that information. Just whatever you need to do. Uh, we also sell the hardware, you know, the, the sensors and the turntables, so uh, we can get you all set up there. Uh, someone's asking a good question. Are the scans compatible with other CAD CAM software? Yes, in a sense. Um, the OBJs are an open format, so if you are using a different 3D visualization software or a 3D software where you need the actual mesh, we export, like I said, two standard formats, OBJ and STL, which uh, most, if not all, 3D systems support. As far as the measurements, um, a direct interaction from the scanning software to a CAD system, we've only done with TucaCAD, which is TucaTech's pattern making grading system. Um, but we do export these in ways that other CAD systems could use if, they, if you wanted to uh, work with them to do it. So for example, um, a CSV file is a comma separated file that is just text, uh, which has the measurement name and the value uh, and the units. So you could use that to uh, sync with a CAD system. But like I said, um, TucaCAD is the one system where we've actually gone all the way, where you can export the measurements directly into TucaCAD. <clears throat> um, also to create your templates, I will show you here in New Garment. Um, you can kind of see it here. I'm gonna go ahead and click create a new template. There's a button here to import pattern. Um, this works with TucaCAD's CAD CAM software where you open up the pattern in TucaCAD and uh, basically export it as a file and it'll import directly into here. So you can see here that I've got my fit model measurements on the left, which is the person that I scan that fits into this size the best. And what'll happen when you import pattern is all of the sample size measurements will get populated here and create your template for you. So it's an easy way to create your templates in the software. Uh, and it works the other way around as well. So if I export garment measurements, um, that can open up in TucaCAD, and their Tuca Tailor product will actually um, do many things. It can choose the size of the garment from a size set that best matches the person. It can also make adjustments to the pattern uh, to better fit that person. Um, so if you'd like to know more about that, you can send an email to uh, Tuca Team at tucatech.com. And you can ask about their Tuca Taylor product. And they'll be able to give you more information about their CAD product specifically. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, like I said, also the, the Tuca 3D product works with this as well to be able to do visualizations uh, with animation and textures and all that sort of thing. All right, let's see what else we have here. Um, I wanted to mention, like I said, that um, uh, Microsoft is a serious partner of ours. We're actually, we get the beta products um, whenever they release a new scanner or a, uh, uh, a new SDK. So it gives us sort of a head start on developing and uh, they're making some good strides. We're also working with other companies who are putting these depth sensors into portable devices. So uh, you should see a big push next year for different companies to put these types of sensors into phones, into tablets, uh, which allows people to be even more portable. And we're, uh, we're working with uh, large companies directly to be able to promote that as well. So it's kind of an exciting time for this technology. Um, someone is asking about hand scanning for full bodies, not just feet. It is something that's built into the software. Um, we have an option to do, to attach a sensor to a tablet and uh, scan a full body with that. And like I said just a minute ago, we are testing with some other vendors and large companies who want to put these sensors into tablets embedded into the bezel of tablets. So it is something that we're into. Um, you can scan faces, feet, you know, other objects with these devices or with these sensors. Um, so yeah, it is, we are capable of it. Um, currently, 
uh, as far as in order to get accurate measurements and precise measurements, we do suggest that people mount the uh, sensor to a stand and use a turntable because we get really good results with that. Uh, but hand scanning is a possibility as well. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to say about that. I don't remember what it is. Let me see here. Uh, let me see what else I can show you here. Someone has asked about um, precision actually just now. Um, the Connect scanner gives us a precision of about 0.14 inches, um, which is less than five millimeters of precision uh, for each of the measurements. So. Our, the actual scanner precision is about two millimeters in terms of the detail of the uh, mesh itself. And we get somewhere between two and a half and five millimeters of precision for all the measurements. And actually, if I click here on my charts and graphs, for all the measurements, you can see the standard deviation along with the average. So our standard deviation for um, many of these measurements is very, very low. Um, and that's thanks to the Connect sensor and uh, their heuristics that we find the body parts on. So uh, we do have quite good precision. Um, the Connect sensor is actually about 30 to 40 percent more precise than other sensors. Um, previously, we were using ACES Action sensors. We're still compatible with that. Um, Intel is, is looking at sensors. Google's looking at sensors. So uh, we are uh, looking to support as many sensors as possible. Um, the Connect is an exceptional one in terms of precision. It's really quite good. Um, in terms of accuracy, like I said, we're also uh, quite accurate. That's a sort of a sliding scale um, because what do you compare to, right? Hand measurements are inherently inaccurate. Um, and so we encourage people to, to use the scanner because uh, it really does give consistent measurements every time where a person using measuring tape, uh, you know, might be a little higher, a little lower, not quite as, uh, as precise. Um, someone's asking about the garments um, that you have to wear in order to get a scan. That's a really good question. So we do require that someone who gets scanned wear uh, form-fitting garments. For women, that could be um, like yoga pants or leggings uh, and a bra um, or a sports bra. For men, that could be bike shorts uh, without a shirt. We really want to see the shape of the body, and this type of technology does not look through clothing. It, uh, it will only scan what it sees. So uh, someone will be required to show off the shape of their body in order to get an accurate scan. Um, Someone's asking about a particular measurement, which is a crotch measurement. I do have a crotch height here. I'll show that to you right now, and I'll turn on see so you can see. Right, so uh, you can see that our heuristics are actually um, capturing the crotch point regardless of uh, some occlusion that's happening in the scan. Um, yeah, someone's mentioning that uh, there's a lump under the crotch area. That's an area where the scanner um, couldn't see properly. Uh, maybe the thighs were touching if it's a larger person or it's in shadow, uh, but our heuristics compensate for that as well. So we'll actually catch the proper crotch point um, regardless of those issues. Uh, same thing with the armpit area, because that's traditionally a, a bit of an issue for people to measure. Uh, you can imagine someone with large arms. Uh, the bust area will still come out and resolve fine regardless. Um, we do take 33 standard measurements, but we actually support um, a couple of hundred and many more landmarks than you see here. Uh, this is just our standard measurement set. So if there are specific measurements that you need that you can't take yourself, I'm sure we have it um, and uh, can add that to your measurement definition, be able to capture those measurements. Uh, the scanner works in most indoor lighting conditions. It does not work outside. so. Um, you'll have to scan indoors away from windows. The reason for that is because the because daylight has a lot of infrared light in it, and that can actually in, impact the uh, quality of the scan. Most indoor lighting will work. 
um, there are the rare case where there's a halogen that produces infrared light. As long as it's pointing away from the scanning area, it should be fine. Also, you don't want to have mirrors behind the scanning area. Like if you have a fitting, if you're going to put this in a fitting room, it, it should fit fine. We do have um, many customers that use it that way. Just move the mirror to be behind the sensor. Don't put it in front behind the person because the light will bounce off and cause issues. Um, someone is asking what to do when you've got really tall or really short people with uh, widely varying weights. Um, like I said, the, the recommended max load for this turntable is uh, 300 pounds. It can go higher, but the scan will take longer because the motor uh, slows down a little bit at, at very high weights. As far as heights, the field of view for the sensor is actually quite wide. It's about, uh, I believe, 70 percent. I'm sorry, 70 degrees um, horizontal and vertical 60 degrees. We mount the sensor on its side, so we actually get a 70 degree field of view off the sensor. Um, so that we, at four feet away, we can uh, scan somebody from as short as you can get to about six foot three, six foot four inches. If you have somebody who's taller than that, you'll need to move the sensor back a little bit, and that's all you'll need to do. Um, the turntable area will still be, you know, caught. You saw in the video that uh, there's a little blue circle there to show you where the turntable needs to go. So really just for extremely tall people, you just back the sensor up a little bit and then capture the scan. Uh, for a shorter person, in theory, you can move the sensor closer, uh, but you don't really need to. You'll get the same, uh, about the same results regardless. Right. I'm going to leave this spec sheet up. I think people will find it interesting. Um, Computer requirements. Like I said, we are working to support uh, mobile devices. Uh, somebody mentioned the uh, Structure I.O. sensor on the iPad. We have looked at that. They actually use um, a prime sensor, which we support. It's a sensor that Apple bought and is no longer selling. So um, I don't know if they're going to be able to continue with their same sensor since it's not publicly available anymore. Um, but yeah, we support exactly the same technology that they have, um, and we support others as well. Uh, the Connect is just our favorite currently. Uh, like I said, next year I believe we're going to see a huge push towards this type of technology in a wide range of devices, and uh, we as a company are very interested in, in um, keeping as open as possible, as agnostic as possible when it comes to sensors. Uh, computer requirements for the scanning software. To view the scan, the requirements are quite low, uh, but to capture, we do require that we have a strong video card, uh, an NVIDIA video card uh, with at least one GB of RAM in order for the scan to be captured properly um, and registered. Uh, we do all of our registrations in the device. Um, we do have a mobile option where we can register on our server uh, in downtown Los Angeles, but for the most part, people register locally uh, so that they have their data in hand. So it does require a little bit stronger uh, computer for that. Uh, someone is asking about web-based options. We are in the process of um, building our website to be able to display the same information that you get with the scanner over the web and share that with customers. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but when I was loading up Daniela's scans, the first thing that I see is her profile, which is based on her email address, which we use as a username. Um, the profile gets automatically created on our servers. And uh, it's on our roadmap to actually give customers and resellers and uh, people who are scanning people as well as people who have been scanned access to their information over the web as well if they want it. Um, so, yes, that is something that you should see um, next year pretty soon. It's, it's on, we have a timeline for it. Um, it's not currently available, but it should be pretty soon. All right. Uh, 
Uh, I wanted to mention that this uh, webinar is also recorded, so if you will, if you want to share it with somebody else, um, it will be available on WebEx's site after this. Um, so you can look at it later, you can show other people, and uh, I can send you, if you send me a private message with your email, or send an email to info at stiker.com, I can uh, give you the link for that as well. Anybody else have any questions? I'll say one more time, if you're interested in purchasing the software or a hardware kit, um, shoot an email to us at info at staiku.com and uh, we can send you our brochure, some pricing information, and uh, an invoice as needed. Um, I'm just going to say one more time that if you're interested in the fitness and health related parts of this software, uh, we are going to give another webinar tomorrow. I'm going to link that again to this uh, to the chat for people who came in a little late. Oops, that's the wrong one. That's the one I'm in now. There we go. This is the link to the webinar that I'll do tomorrow morning uh, where I'll go over in more detail some of the fitness and health uh, features of the software. Also, if you showed up a little late and you want to see uh, an example of how a scan is done and how the hardware is set up, I did record a video which is right here. So you can watch that uh, when you get a chance. Um, someone's asking about privacy issues, keeping the information to customers. It's a very good question. Um, we consider the scan data and the measurements and everything to be the property of the person who got scanned. So if they ever uh, don't want to share the information or want to remove the information, we give an option to do that uh, on our website, which um, uh, like I said, when we're when we're starting to release that feature, um, we are very secure on the web. We use SSL and uh, a technology called OAuth to uh, protect the transmission of data going back and forth between um, the scanning software and our server. And uh, the login, you know, it's a secure login uh, to be able to access the data as well. So we should be we consider ourselves very secure in terms of privacy and data sharing. If you want to check out our privacy policy or anything like that, you can go to our website. Um, it's linked there. Actually, uh, I'll give you two links. The first is to our main website, which is here, www.staiku.com. Uh, and then for the body scanner specifically, um, there's two sites. One is this. which is uh, another description of this software, how it works, what it's for, that sort of thing. Um, and then our privacy policy, et cetera, is located here. You can make a note about all of those links. You know what, I sent those links to Rim by himself. Let me share those again for everybody, I apologize. That's my fault. Okay, so clicking on everyone. Here is the link to the scanning demo that I did yesterday. Uh, here's the link to tomorrow's webinar about fitness and health. And then um, for our websites, um, it's www.staiku.com. And for my body specifically, it is this one. Uh, and then privacy policy, the My Body specific website, really, is this one. Uh, 
Uh, if you do want more information, you can send me an email. Um, we check it all the time. Do you just look at info at psycho.com? Send me an email there if you're interested in pricing or if you have more questions or uh, anything else you need to know. All right. I want to say thank you to everybody who came and uh, listened to me talk. Um, if you're interested in the fitness and health, uh, come on tomorrow and at the same time, and I'll uh, give you more information about that. I uh, really appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting, and uh, we'll speak later. Take care. Thank you.